public hearing pursuant to RSA 284 colon 51 comma I comma B. And we'll open that public hearing at 7 o'clock for the purpose of complying with the provisions of RSA 284 colon 51 colon I colon B to solicit to solicit to solicit public hearing comment to allow Kino within the town. So, do we have anybody wishing to make public comment? Well, now it makes sense. Don't run. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Uda Penio. I hope uh, in the March meet, in the March vote, town vote, that people vote for Kino. Right now, if you watch in the afternoon, it's a mass exodus. They're going across the bridge, going into Massachusetts, spending the money over there, and coming back. The money is gone not only for the town or people who own restaurants or bar rooms on the beach, it's also gone from the, for the state, the rooms and meals taxes. So I hope people are voting for it. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard on Keno? Just made it. Just made it. <laughs> Um, I'm Donna Mercer. I, um, I work at Ocean Gaming, and I think that this is a no-brainer for the town, for the businesses. Um, it's, it's pennies to play, it's dollars to play. Um, I, I just think turning it down would be ridiculous to have them go across the border to Salisbury. So I just wanted to say that. Thanks, Donna. Chairman Waddell, ladies and gentlemen of the uh, Select Board, my name is Chris Nevins. I live at 36 Ashbrook Drive. I'm here also to advocate uh, for Keno for the town of Hampton. As you gentlemen and ladies well know, uh, the bill has already passed uh, at the State House that uh, uh, we have that choice. We are allowed to choose whether to, to have it or not, and many of the towns have already voted for it, and it's already shown some uh, productivity. I'm also speaking to people who know all about how education is funded uh, in the state of New Hampshire. Uh, our state funding is based on a, a grant system called the uh, Adequate Education Aid uh, System, and uh, it receives, we receive, and all towns receive, $3,600 per student. Uh, for our kindergartners, uh, though, that's cut in half to $1,800, and uh, that's what uh, all the towns are, do receive for their kindergartners. If the Kino does pass, uh, there's going to be more advantage, obviously, to not only towns who don't have kindergarten, but a town like Hampton who does have kindergarten. Uh, not only will we continue to receive the $1,800, that's not going to change at all, uh, but there will also be an additional for fiscal year uh, 19, uh, $1,100 added to that $1,800 uh, for uh, kindergarten. And if Kino does pass in a town uh, or if Keno does pass and it flourishes, if you will, and profits, we'll also be able to get in 2020 and possibly beyond uh, additional funding up to $700, $750 or so. So we see a great advantage, not only because people cross the border and, uh, you know, we're losing some funding there, uh, but the fact that uh, people want this form of a lottery, and it's I'll have to call it that a lottery because it's just uh, a when you gamble a little bit, when I go out and buy a lottery ticket, it's just a choice I make. Uh, and uh, admittedly, I don't make it very often. <laughs> but when I do make it, it's a choice I make, win or lose. Uh, that's the way it's going to be. Uh, so I would encourage, you know, I repeat this, and I know most of you, you, all of you know what I've just said about the law, but I hope the people of Hampton are listening tonight. And I hope many of them know that uh, the, the fact of, Having a game like Keno, uh, <coughs> and, and that advantage, uh, is, is really something we can't pass up. The money's certainly going to the casino, and if the casino gains, uh, well, then we're going to gain more in taxes. The, if the casino gains, the uh, charitable organization is associated with it, and I'm a uh, coordinator for two charities at our local uh, casino here, will also uh, gain an advantage. 
Uh, so for that reason, I would really um, encourage uh, not only my select board, uh, but uh, my townspeople to vote for when uh, it comes up here in March, on our second Tuesday in March when we have our elections, to vote for uh, Kino in a very positive way. And I think we're all going to benefit from that vote. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public wishing to be heard on this subject? Good evening. Good evening. Richard Rennie at 29 Highland Ave. I was a little disappointed. I thought there might have been somebody here from the Gaming Commission that would give us a little more insight on uh, some of the, the uh, ramifications of this whole thing. So I'm not sure at this point, for my, myself personally, if I consider this to be a boon or a boondoggle, only because there are a number of questions that I have and I wish somebody would, be, would answer them for me. First of all, from my understanding, uh, this system of playing Kino is going to be a little different than the way we go out and buy lottery tickets now, where you walk up to a counter and you buy the lottery, the scratch tickets, that these machines are independent standing units. Is that correct? No. From what I've seen. It's a well, unit that somebody sits over here. It, though. It's worked through a main computer system. Right. Yeah. You, you have to go to someone who sells you the tickets. Well, one of the machines that I have seen, Kino, somebody standing in front of that machine and punching their numbers in. Mm -hmm. That's different than the way they play Kino in Massachusetts. You go to a vendor, you stand up there, you and you give him a slip, and he punches it in for you. So it's anyway, different. that's one question. What type of system is this? Uh, how do you pay for it? Is it through, you know, do you go up to this machine with your credit card to play a dollar bet? Or do you put cash in that machine? I don't know. So I'm a little questionable. Um, that was one of the questions. What type of unit is it, and how do you pay for it, through cash or a credit card? The second thing, what is, it, what is going to be the cost or the additional cost for the Gaming Commission to control this system? I'll just cite one example here. If you, are, all of you have seen these white vans that go around to the different vendors to resupply the, uh, the scratch tickets and to pick up the revenue and so on. Just for the sake of discussion, let's assume that this fellow is able to cover 25 different stores during the course of the day. Well, now you're going to add another function for him to do. He's going to have to service that machine. He's going to have to remove the cash of it or, or, or resupply the cash. He's going to have to fill it up with the with the uh, the blank slips. So now it's probably going to he's going to add additional time for every time that he has to stop to one of these vendors. Keep going. How much how much more time is that going to cost? Uh, is it going to involve additional personnel to service these machines? What percent of the revenue? is retained by that, the bar or whoever has that machine. Eight percent. He gets, so wherever that machine is placed, he gets eight percent. How much of it does the state get for the administration and the accounting of this? Or for everything that the state, that involves the state? What percentage of that dollar goes to the state? And what percent of it is into the, the kindergarten fund. I don't know. So, so some of, those are some of the questions. Does the money stay within the town? If we have five machines in various establishments around town, is the money, the money that is generated from those machines, what portion of that stays within the town to fund the kindergarten within the town. I've or read that they split it. That all towns split it, whether they even do Kino or not. They all get a share of it. It's split well, equally. Whether or not they, in other words, if they if they don't if they don't put the Kino machine, if, if towns vote not to do Kino, right, they, still they get are the still money. entitled to the. They fund. still get a percentage of the of the revenue. Yes. Does that seem quite fair? Again, those are the questions that I have. Uh, so until I hear a little more about it, uh, again, I'm undecided whether or not this 
is going to be good for art. <coughs> Thank you. You know, I'm sure if yes. you went to the bill and read the bill, that would probably have a lot of those questions in there, the funding and everything, the percentages would probably would most likely be in the bill. Or if you contacted the Gaming Commission. All right. I bet you you could get Well, again, questions. I thought there might have been somebody from the I, Gaming Commission here yeah. tonight, you know, to, to answer our questions. But good questions. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard on the public hearing? Anybody from the board wishing to speak on this? Okay. Sure. Yes? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I know that some of the towns have already passed the Kino legislation. I know Summersworth is one of them. One of the uh, uh, little businesses up there, uh, she claims her, her business itself has increased by 20%. I guess she's the highest store in the state so far for selling Kino. Uh, like you said, 8% of it goes to the goes to the place. Does it. Right. Uh, the funding, as far as the rest of it, it all goes back to the state, and then they're going to disperse it out. Whether we can we can talk all day long about whether it's right or wrong that a town doesn't town gets it for uh, whether they allow Keno or not. Uh, I think the big thing is that we have a lot of businesses in this town that would enjoy the Keno. I think we have a lot of citizens in this town that enjoy Keno. I <coughs> I was talking with a guy the other day who says he goes his routine is Saturday nights he goes over plays Keno over in Salisbury. Well, he can come to Hampton and play Keno and stay right in town. Keep his business local, keep his, uh, not only for the Keno, but for having dinner and everything else. I think uh, that that's important. Um, you, you know, so like I said, the, the establishment that sells it, they get it. As far as servicing the machines, I, I would assume it's going to be similar to the to the, uh, the the Megabucks machines you can buy now, that they have now, where the, the business that has them, they actually stock those and they take care of that is on a lot of them. And, you know, the state may come and do a machine here or there, but I know a number of businesses that have the machines in them and they stock them themselves. The state sells them the stuff, sells, sells them the scratch tickets, and they put them in the machine themselves. The machine will just, the, the state will come around, check your figures, check your counts, make sure everything is right. But this, you know, it's uh, the ability of the, of the uh, the uh, establishment themselves to to uh, to make sure the machine gets full and stays full. So I think it's a great uh, a great thing for the town, and I hope all the voters do consider allowing us to have it because I think it's again right now we're getting eighteen hundred dollars. After this, we're going to get another eleven $1 hundred dollars more, and probably another seven hundred above that. On that, that goes back to the schools. It helps every little bit helps. So. so they're not doing it like they do it in Massachusetts. I don't know how it's. I don't know how the actual game is played here, whether it's different than the mass game or not. Because I think they're making a mistake if they don't. The, the way it works, I play Keno all over the world. They have a lady selling the tickets, and if they do it out of a machine, that's how you put money into the machine. No one's going to use it. They're going to drive right over to Massachusetts as fast as they can get. Oh, there. I'm sure that there's, I'm sure there's some way. I don't know because you can buy scratch tickets without buying them from a machine yeah, well, too. So the I, way Keno I'm usually late till we find out. Find what out what happens with Keno is every six minutes another game starts, and they sell them. And you own, it's even less than six minutes. I think it's every three minutes. You, they just keep selling them. They have to have a person there punching it into the machine. Then those same people are the ones that cash the tickets. So if it works like a like a, a Kino scratch ticket, that's not going to do that good. So I can't even imagine they would do that. They've got to be doing. Uda must know. It's going to actually work both ways. They'll, uh, they can have someone doing it, keying it in. There'll also be a kiosk where you can go in. You cannot, as far as I know, you cannot purchase lottery tickets with a credit card. Yeah, so you can't but do any can't lottery stuff. In it, yeah. But you can put so you mean that you could fill out your machine and yes. you do it, but it would be just like the woman punching it or the person it punching it. It would be in the way that you can um, go to a kiosk now and get a Megabucks ticket. Yeah, but you have to punch your own numbers in it, yes. just like but you would if you were buying it from a person. Be, they'll have it both ways. You can either have someone doing it, like the bartender doing it for you, or you can have a kiosk you can have both. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. That yeah. makes it even better. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One more is uh, this board voted unanimous to support this 
and uh, it's a natural fit with the town of Hampton. Those that spoke earlier in support of this uh, are right on the money. It's a natural fit for Hampton, and uh, Mr. Renier is aptly instructed by the chair to uh, go to the uh, uh, State of New Hampshire website. You can review the law and answer your own questions. Uh, it'll be delineated there, but again, it was a unanimous vote. It's a natural fit for Hampton, and I uh, and I know the board encourages all people to support the measure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing at 7:15.